Hey everybody, Shane with Shaw here from RSW Guitars. Today we're going to look at drilling for the tuners and we're also going to see how a radial drill press and toggle clamps can come in really handy around the shop. Okay, so we got um, a little contraption set up here on our drill press. Uh, pretty simple, it's just a piece of uh, birch plywood with uh, an extension block to raise up this uh, toggle clamp. So when we clamp it down, uh, it puts a, a nice amount of pressure on the uh, neck blank to keep uh, the headstock flat to the table. Uh, I'll give you an example here. I've already done one hole here just as a tester just to make sure uh, everything was lining up properly. Now, the good thing about this is um, I have a radial drill press, which means that it is adjustable. I just want to get this kind of lined up here. See how that just locks that into place, nice and flat, no movement at all. Um, I have a radial drill press, so what that means is this drill press, I can adjust, I can adjust a bit sideways like this but I can also adjust a bit I'll loosen off the clamp here I can also adjust a bit out as well and in okay so I got a lot of um, I can so this allows me to just be able to clamp my piece of uh, my piece of work to the table uh, not move any of that and actually adjust the uh, drill press itself to uh, get the positioning I need to uh, line up to the areas or to these uh, you know these little holes that I've already um, center punched here so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust make these adjustments here it looks like if I just tighten that down a little bit and then bring this forward just a hair going nice and slowly. So, you see we got two nice holes there, no, uh, no tear out, we can move on to the next one. And uh, we'll just keep going, we'll do all seven of them, and, uh, and that step will be done. Okay, so I've rasped away most of the material here. <clears throat> you know, to maybe take away just a little bit more here. You hit the rest with the sandpaper. Okay, we're pretty good there. <clears throat> now we're going to take some 120 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and let me move this a little bit. Move this up in the vise. So I can see, it's just so I can get a little bit of ride on the neck here. Okay, so now what I want to do, I just want to take this sanding block and, you know, kind of concentrate in my, uh, my efforts just on this area here. Um, I'm going to try and take... Try and take this down here.
get in here. Have a look, see. So, grab a pencil. And we're going to mark where the end of the nut is. So it's going to sit right about there. Which is actually perfect because if our slope starts here, then uh, we just have the nut exposed. And that's what we uh, previously had set up to do. So everything seems to be lining up great. Okay, so we got our rudder bit all set up uh, to depth and everything. And uh, we've got this template here that I've made. And it's just got a 5 8 slot cut into it. Uh, routed into it, sorry. And on the back are some uh, 13 degree wedges. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us keep us uh, lined up here. And uh, it's going to set on here like so. We take the front of this slot and we line it up with the line where our slope for our headstock starts. And then what we'll do is uh, We'll fasten some two-sided tape to these two areas and we'll fasten some to this area too um, to attach it to the neck. Uh, we center it, get it set, push it down and then we take our router here and we've got a, uh, we just got a 5 8 guide um, around the bit here and we're just going to use that. We'll set, the, uh, we'll set the router on top here just like so plunge it down, run it down the cut, bring it back out and uh, we'll probably do it in a couple passes because this needs to be about a half inch deep so you know about a quarter inch per pass should be fine um, I decided instead of doing a half inch uh, I got reading the instructions they recommend a quarter inch bit so that's what I'm going to use I'm actually going to use a 5 8 or a 5 16 um, just because I do want a little bit extra there Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to mark this location so that we can just see it a little bit better. Okay, so we'll mark that right here. This is the area where we want the, the uh, cut to stop. And we've got our center here. Now, because of the round bit, what we're going to do is we're going to end up having like a round area here where it stops. And that's fine. We'll just go, we're going to, uh, we'll straighten that. We'll straighten these corners out. We'll square them up with a, a sharp chisel when we're done. But uh, right now we're just concentrating on getting this slot cut so that we can uh, get access to the truss rod. Okay, so we've got this cleaned up with a chisel and whatnot. And we're actually just going to straighten this up a little bit too. Just where we had cut it with the uh, exacto blade wasn't exactly straight. That looks pretty good there. Let's just clean that out quick. Okay, <clears throat> looking good. Now we'll drop our uh, truss rod in here. Look at that. Drops right in nicely. Okay, so. See how we're doing for adjustability. We can get in there nicely to adjust that. Yep, looks good. Looks good. Okay, so we're good to go there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the uh, cut the other profile in it. This back profile here, and uh, you know the headstock shape and everything, taper in the neck and whatnot. And then, uh, and then I'll come back and I'll do the drilling for the uh, for the locking nut. Till then.